Hello again guys, Matt joined by David and Ali here on Livewire, where we bring you the latest gaming and pop culture news weekly. In today's video, we are continuing our look at For Honor, the medieval combat title from Ubisoft. And we apologise for the delay of this video guys, and in fact all videos on the channel. Unfortunately, the internet overlords didn't get their monthly sacrifice on time. But we are back and more and more news videos will be released on the channel to give you your weekly fix of pop culture news. Now one of the main questions asked about this game is whether or not it will have a single player campaign. As so far, the chuggles of news that have been released to us is solely news on the 4v4 multiplayer. But we are here to tell you that Ubisoft have confirmed that they are working on a single player campaign and in fact it is one of their major focuses on the development floor. Producer Stefan Carden confirmed that there will be a full solo campaign that will highlight the main warrior's legacy and their paths and motivations. He confirms this by stating in an interview that one of the big questions we receive in feedback is about the solo campaign. We said that we will have a solo campaign and I can promise you that we will have a solo campaign. It's one of the key subjects we're working on on the floor. I can't wait to show stuff off to you guys and we'll do it as soon and as early as possible like we did with multiplayer. This is exciting news for anyone who enjoys storytelling in a game. As we know, there are three main factions. The Chosen, the Warborn and the Legions. And we think that there will actually be three solo campaigns for us to enjoy, one for each of the Warrior Legacies. This would allow the developers to really tell the story of the three factions and we could then decide for ourselves which legacy we want to follow online. What we know so far about the motivations of the three factions isn't much but it's certainly something to go on. The Chosen, the Warborn and the Legions are all fighting a bloody war for territory. And you know, the survival of their people. In our earlier videos we have expressed that the Chosen have survived a thousand years of wandering the southern deserts. This journey should have wiped them out centuries ago, but they have survived thanks to the skills and focus of their great heroes. These great heroes somehow hope to lead their people to an impossible victory and establish a new homeland. Likely the heroes in this story refers to the players in game, and their campaign would allow us to see firsthand the struggles of their nation. We would hone our abilities and skills to become a deadly samurai assassin and when all seems lost we would lead our people into new territories to help our people survive and flourish. This new homeland however might mean the start of the conflict with the other two factions. We know early on for example that the Tectonic Knights of the Legions are defending their homelands and territories from the Chosen and the Warborn. And instead of sharing their lands they seek to use an iron judgement and brute force to push the invaders back and protect their country. For the Knights of the Legions campaign, we could see the players taking the role of a legendary hero who aims to push back the invading foe, defending strongholds and lands before finally thrusting the invaders back whence they came. Perhaps even pushing their enemy further back into their own territory, taking all their land and all their spoils along the way. Finally, this leaves the campaign of the Warborn. We also know that early on these Viking warriors are protecting their ancestral homelands from invading enemies. Perhaps this is also chosen samurai seeking a new home, or invading knights if not both. It could also be that the Warborn and Legions have been warring for some time and that they have been pushed back into their own territory having to defend fiercely on the lands of their ancestors. Be it the Knights or the Samurai, the player would have to fend off enemies in their own territory like the Knights before finally breaking into the region of the enemy, similar to the Knights campaign but from the other side of the battle. What will be interesting to see though is who invaded who first, and obviously who will ultimately win the war. This has been the latest For Honor news regarding the solo campaign, but what are you most excited for in For Honor? Testing your skills in multiplayer, or living the stories of these great warrior legacies? Tell us in the comments below, and if you have any other ideas about what you'd like to see in the campaign, be sure to let us know. We all have our favourite warrior legacy that we want to rally behind. Where does your allegiance lie? As always, look out for the latest news in For Honor here at Livewire, as well as a variety of other upcoming games. As always, we really appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel and leave a like rating if you want to see more. Until next time, you can watch our other news videos we have here on the channel. Or if you just want some fun, check out our other channel, Tube Noobs TV, where you can watch our multitude of Let's Plays. Until next time then folks, see ya! Okay then guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, remember to hit that like and sub button if you want to see more weekly news on your favourite upcoming games, TV shows and more. And keep those comments coming! 
You can click here to see our For Honor playlist to see information on what to expect as well as the customization options in game. Or click here to see OR Ghost Recon Wildlands news.